captivity for 70 years. And then they came back and they were reestablished in their homeland. But after a short while of being returned and God's favor being upon them, they had sank back into sin and iniquity. And that's the basis of this psalm. O oh Lord, you showed favor to your land. You restored the captivity of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You covered all their sin. You withdrew your fury. You turned away your burning anger. Restore us, O oh God, of our salvation. And cause your indignation toward us to cease. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not yourself revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your loving kindness, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord God, we come before you today and we praise you for your holiness and for your love and your mercy for your compassion, for your loving kindness, for your provisions. Lord, for your great love towards us in sending your son Jesus, who died on Calvary's cross and rose from the grave and is victorious. And Lord, we look forward to the day when he comes again. We are thankful today, God, that you have provided for our needs, both physically and especially spiritually. And God, as we read this psalm today, we recall your mercies and your unfailing love to Israel in the past. And God, how you gave them covenant love when they strayed from you. And though you punished them for their iniquity and you chastised them for their sin, you brought them back and you did restore them in the land. And God, we see that as an example of your unfailing love toward the church, the bride of Christ. And God, today we must confess that as a nation and as a people, we have sown the wind and we reap the whirlwind. We pray, dear God, that you restore us. You restore us individually, our hearts back to you for our Lord we have left our first love and our hearts have shifted towards our idols. And dear God, we praise that you would, we pray that you would cause us to return and that Lord, we would come back and once again serve you in spirit and in truth. We pray, dear God, for our churches in America. We pray, God, that they once again would preach the gospel in power like in Pentecost and that thousands would hear the message of the gospel from the holy people of God and that they would turn and that through the churches Lord you would restore our nation for our nation Lord is today feeling the fury of your wrath through oppressive governments and through the sewer of iniquity that's spewing out through sexual immorality and impurity to our nation Dear God, we see a debauchery abounding and wickedness growing. We pray, dear God, that you would restore us and cause your indignation toward us to cease. Will you not yourself revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us, we pray, dear God, your loving kindness and grant us your salvation. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. It's with great pleasure today that uh, I once again get to introduce my friend. Uh, we have uh, Pastor Chris and his wife uh, Joan are here from Nairobi, Africa, uh, Kenya. Uh, they traveled further than anybody else today to get here. And uh, uh, we are just blessed. We've partnered with them in ministry. And I must say, when we were in Africa, they gave us the first class treatment. And uh, they are just people of God. And so Miss Joan is going to sing. And then after she sings, uh, Pastor Chris is going to come and preach God's word. So uh, 
Uh, I know that you're going to hug their neck and tell them how glad you are that they're back with us today and uh, just to give them a good old Southern Calvert welcome. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Do you love the Lord this morning? Amen. I do too love him and I just want you to know that the Lord loves you this morning very much. He does love you. And uh, I'm going to sing a song that you all know how great thou art but I will do it in Swahili so you can sing along in English it's not different from what you sing in English just translated to Swahili Bwana Mungu na shanga kabisa nikifikiri jitsi ulivyo Nyotanguru Movitu vyote pia Viumbwa vyo Kwa uwezo wako Roho yangu Na hiku imbie Jinsi wewe Roho yangu na ikuimbie Jinsi wewe ulivyomku Nikikumbuka vile wewe mungu Peleka mwanao Afeazi Chukue dhambi zetu Kuyatambua Nivigumu mno Roo yangu Na ikuimbie Pastor Steve has made me look like a king. <laughs> I'm telling you, you have a wonderful pastor. Uh, can we clap for him? <clears throat> yes, he is a man of God. And when he came to Africa, we can never remember, uh, forget how he worked so hard not only on our buildings by painting the classrooms he worked so hard and people and the children in Africa they miss him would you send him back with us <laughs> 
would you send him back with us because we miss him and he started there a bible school called we call it african mobile bible school or bible college and pastors from all over kenya uganda and we are getting some from tanzania they are begging for that mission to continue how many of you would support that emotion pastor you can see how many people can we clap for that you see the world is crying the world is starving for the word of god you see when you live in america here you don't feel like what we feel in africa because all over here you have churches all over you have many good preachers whom we don't have and the pastor and the team that came over to africa will tell you how many people came to listen to him and how many people were really touched by the teachings because most of pastors there they have had no training at all they just go in because they feel god has called them but they don't have tools so we pray that god would help us to unite together for one purpose and that purpose is enlarging the kingdom by teaching and helping out those preachers to be able to preach the word having the tools they need so we want to thank the pastor and his wife and the church for the good work you are doing for the whole world so let this clapping is for the whole church amen i want also to thank the team that came with him and also i would like to thank uh the 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 people that took up kids in africa especially at soweto academy to sponsor them you are doing a great job those children would have had no way of getting education if you had not stepped in to help them get education so thank you so much i want to thank sister terry and brother willie for keeping us like young children we eat all that we need to eat and uh, sometimes i'm tempted not to go back to africa you see you have the best so i want to thank you sister terry and brother willie for having that heart for us when you come to america here you think you are in heaven already you see you, this is how much you are blessed and maybe you don't see it that way but i would give you a challenge to come to kenya or to go to any third world country and evaluate yourself see how much god has blessed you you have running water in your homes you have food on your table you have good roads you have a good house to live in so when we say it's time to thank the lord you have everything that you have to thank god for because god has truly blessed you and so i want to thank god for you and i would like you to work with us pray for us and god will bless you when you go to over there to heaven he will say well done my faithful servant i tell people with me he will say over done my faithful servant <laughs> you see because of the heat in africa every day when you wake up is very hot and you have to go from village to village you have to go into the slums where there is no toilet where there is no running water where there is no nothing when you wake up you don't know what you would eat for lunch you don't know what you would eat for supper we don't know you just wake up and just call it a day 
one day at a time. So we thank God for what he does for us. And so there is every reason for you to thank God for what you have. Even if you get a bill in your apostle, you thank God for it because you are able to pay somebody. Over there in Africa, things are so hard. There's no jobs. There's nothing. And I'll be talking about that in the evening. Please come so that we can share together. And if you have any question, you can ask and we are going to share together. Without wasting much time, I know time is, is money. It's not like in uh, Africa here where we, we speak for me, we preach for many hours. Over here you have a lot of things to do and we thank God for that. We have also had time to pray with our mom there at her house and our brother. You have a powerful prayer team here. Amen? Amen? This church is a powerful church because of its action. Actions. Because of its deeds. I'm sorry I don't speak English like Americans. I wish I could. But I'm learning slowly. Maybe one day I will speak like you. So you just bear with me. I was born in Africa. My mother was an African, my father was an African, so I learned English in school, and still I'm still learning. So you just bear with me, but just for a few minutes, I want to share with you about what God has put on my heart. We have been watching a uh, world football team, playing team. Uh, we call it in Africa soccer or football. And what we have seen is sometimes someone is given the ball and he loses that chance. Some, I saw someone there given a ball and instead of kicking the ball, he went to bite one, another man. You see? So he lost, a, he lost a chance. And this is what I'm going to talk about today. We are reading from the book of Luke chapter uh, chapter 10 from verses 29 the story goes to verse 37 but I'm just going to read a few verses and then you will uh, read for yourself at home we are just going to talk about two men that lost chances of serving and in my talking I just want you to know that Sometimes God gives you a chance. And when that chance goes, you will never get it again. Amen. I'm praying to God. I say, Jesus, help me. If, you, if I could not have gone to Kibera, you would have raised someone else to go. Because I'm not important. You are the one who is important. Amen? Amen? Amen. Jesus is the one who is important. It's not me. I'm just a tool that God uses. And he could use me or use anybody or even use a donkey. I don't have to be me in order to be used by God. And as long as I'm ready to submit and to obey and to be used of God, he is ready to help me out. So I'm going to read from the book of Luke chapter 10 from verses 29. It says, But he willing to just for himself said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which striped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that, that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, 
and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do, <coughs> excuse me, likewise. You see, this man who had been traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho, the Bible says he fell among thieves that robbed him, kicked him, beat him, and left him half dead. This is what we see in Africa all the time. Being in the slums, eh? uh, it's just terrible. When you see people over there in Africa, they regard Kibera people like the Samaritans. This was even in the Old Testament. We had the Jews and we had the Gentiles. And these Samaritans were among a mixture of Gentiles and the Jews. So they were not really pure. You know, they were not regarded as people who followed the law. And when this man was beaten by thieves, he was out there laying there waiting for whoever that can help him. And the Bible says that the priest was the first person to see, to come and see the man who had been beaten. He had a chance of ministering to him, of helping him, of loving him, of showing the godliness in him. He knew that that was his responsibility as a priest. But we don't know the reason why he could not help this man. Could be he went and checked him out and found he is not a member of his church. <laughs> Maybe. We don't know. Maybe he found out that he doesn't come to his fellowship. Or he doesn't work with him. Or he doesn't, he's, he's nobody. He doesn't know him. So he should not care about him. If he had been a, a member of his church or a member of his whatever he had, he could have ministered to him. But because he doesn't know him, he had no time for him. He left him. So he blew that chance of ministering. He blew that chance of showing mercy. <laughs> he blew that chance of showing love. Then another man came, a Levite. A Levite is a man who worked in the in the temple. He was a godly man. He was supposed to show the masses of God. But he couldn't. The reason best known to himself. He came and looked at the man just the same way the priest did. He came and looked at the man. And he identified him. But he could do nothing about his hurting or the injuries the man had. He was almost dead. But he passed by. Even this uh, Levite also, he blew the chance that he had at that moment. But a good Samaritan 
he was called a good Samaritan, he changed the behavior, the way people thought of Samaritans. He made them look good even though <laughs> even though the Jews despised them. This good Samaritan's action. He service to the man who had been beaten by the thieves and left half dead. The Bible says he came and he ministered to him. He bound his wounds. He put oil on his wounds. He did first aid on him. And not only binding his wounds, but he was able to put him on his ass and take him to the hospital, clinic, or whatever they had by that time. Something to make sure that he gets some healing, he gets some help. And he was called a good Samaritan, not because he took this man to the hospital or he ministered to him this way, but much, much more. The reason why he was called a good Samaritan is that he was willing, he took him to the clinic and he was willing to pay for his for the, for the services that was done for this man. And Jesus made that parable because he wanted to teach this lawyer a lesson. He wanted him to understand the way things of God should be done. And this is why we are here. If I had come here the first time I came here and you said, because you are black, we don't want to see you again. Do you think I could have come? No. I would have told my wife, don't go there. I would, even if you had to bring me back, I would be trembling. Because I don't know what will happen to me after preaching. <laughs> but because you showed me love, and love is like a magnet. Amen? Amen? When you bring a magnet near any, uh, any what? It attracts on any steel or metal. You bring a magnet near the metal, and the metal will by itself just jump to it. So love. You showed me love. You showed the Africans love. You showed those children in Soweto love. Your pastor came and ministered to us with love. He didn't have American lifestyle. He's just saying that I treated him well. Well, in Africa there is nothing. We just we were there, we made sure we are with him, but what he did was everything he bought for us. We were just like a kid going to hunt with his dad and when they kill an animal, he comes back home, he tells his mother, we have killed an animal. So we are saying, we, we, we did, but the pastor and his team did everything for us. Can we clap for them? The church, when you send him there, you send him with love. When you get out there, people will never ask you. Those people who are hungry for Jesus will never ask you which denomination do you belong to. They are hungry for Jesus. A sick man will never ask you if you, are, if you graduated from Yale College or Birmingham University. A sick man is ready for a doctor. Amen? Amen. When you go there, they will not ask you, where did you go to Bible college? Or which church do you attend? They are hungry for the word. We need to know more about Jesus. Tell us more about Jesus. And when Jesus gave us himself, he didn't he didn't look at the color. He didn't look at the sex. He didn't look at the whatever political affiliation or uh, economical whatever. He looked at the hearts. He looked at us as sinners. We needed a savior. And so he came for you and me, for all of us to have him and have life. Amen. 
Hallelujah. We have life. We have everlasting life through Jesus' name. This is what we ought to be. We ought to knock out all the walls of religion if we want to, the people to receive Jesus, if we want people to get healed, if we want people to know God, if we want God to, people to change. Because it's not about sending the army to Iraq or sending the army to Afghanistan. It's okay to do that. That's their job as political area. But we Christians, we have also a part of evangelizing the world. We have. We don't have to look unto politicians to answer the problems. Jesus is the answer to all the problems of the world. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He is the answer. Those politicians are looking unto you. Because if the president came here and he says, I want to be prayed for. He would kneel down and you would pray for him. You are the ones who have authority, not him. His authority remains in the White House. But your authority goes beyond America. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Your authority is all over the world. If you read the Bible in the book of Matthew chapter 28, from verses 19 he says all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations the world is suffering because we Christians we are just sitting here and we are just saying I'm better than you I have a better job or I have more money or I have a bigger car or I have a bigger house all those things God gave them to you to serve him. Everything that you have is the service God gave to you to serve him because he loves you. I was born in Africa. I didn't choose to be born in Africa. It was not my choice. So you can't blame it on me. If I'm poor, look for a way to help me. Those children, they need education. It was not their choice to be born in the slums. It's you who has the power. You can either bind them or loosen them. The Bible says, whatever we bind on earth here shall be bound in heaven. And shall be bound in, on earth and in heaven. Whatever we lose over here it's loosened here and it's loosened in heaven. What does God talk? Why is he talking about that? He's not saying that the president of America has the power. He has constitutional power to run the country, to send the army anywhere. But you see, those bullets cannot shoot a demon. It's your bullet. It's this bullet that can shoot demons. When you go with the word of God, you have power over everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Every house you enter, those demons will just scare away and run away. You see people, you tell them about Jesus. They come and kneel down. They start crying because they are convicted. Something that even in jail, they can't do it. They have trying to reach those jail birds, people that go to jail every time. But if you reach them with the word of God, it changes them. They become new people. They tell you all the sins they had committed. Even the sins that they had, even uh, in court, when they were taken to court, they said, no, we didn't do it. But when Jesus comes in their hearts, they will tell you they did it and they want God to forgive them. That's what we have. Look at yourself. You are not what you think you are. You are greater than what you are because of what God has made you to be. When this man, the, the Samaritan, he was a, a person whom 
if from where he came from you could not change his color he was like a black man like me you can't change my color if I mingle with whites I will, you will single me out <laughs> yeah so Samaritans they were people that you could always tell who they are but this man changed the way other people believed and thought of Samaritans because of the good deeds he did for the man who had been beaten and left half dead today the world is beaten by the devil the world is crying for Jesus <laughs> amen? amen the world is crying for the Lord he is the answer he is the way He's the truth. He's the door. The world is crying for him. And you, you, you have him. You have everything that the world needs. You are a very important person. It doesn't matter what your husband calls you or your wife calls you. Tell him, I am important. Because Jesus has made me important. Amen. And together we can accomplish the mission if we are going to look unto Jesus not to look upon anything else because we can't be the same we can't be equal there is something God has given you that I don't have that's why we need to partner that's why we need to work together I'm not just, just an African coming here to look for money but I'm coming here to hook up with you let us work together my brother and my sister if you went to Africa you need somebody to interpret for you the pastor came there he had an interpreter brother Victor and I I will always understand if these people are talking of knocking off your head because God has a plan for everything and we need one another those Muslims are coming to the slums and recruiting these children because they have the money. They are coming in the slums, recruiting these children and taking them to become Al-Qaeda's, bombers, magas, killers. And we Christians, we are doing nothing because maybe your church is not near me. You see, one is saying, I can't go there because they're just, I don't know them. If you know Jesus, you should know me. Amen. 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 Who is my neighbor? That was the question this lawyer asked Jesus. Who is, he just wanted to justify himself. He says, I've done everything. What else? Who is my neighbor? But if you know Jesus, you should know me. You should know your neighbor. You should know somebody who is suffering, who needs Jesus. How can I work with him? How can I reach him? How can I help him? That's why we are here. We are here to work together as a team. And we want to thank you for allowing your pastor to be part of this. Because as the pastor continues teaching those people, they are also reaching out and reaching hundreds and thousands of people out there who are hungry for the word. Amen. 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 I love you so much. I don't want to take much of your time. I don't know how much, I'm, how much time I'm left with. But I just want to thank you, each one of us. We are important in the hands of God. Amen. Amen. And we are living in the last days and there is no more time to waste. We need one another every time. When you wake up, think of a brother and a sister in the Lord. Because when Jesus was asked that his brothers and mother were out there waiting for him, wanting to talk to him, he looked at the congregation and said, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? Them that do the will of God. They are my brothers. They are my sisters. God, there is no time wasted because if you love America if you love America 
the way God loves America, you will not sit there and complain about how Muslims are coming in here and coming to destroy this country. We can go to their breeding places. How many of you have seen when they exterminate mosquitoes? They go to where they breed. That's where they, they, they spray insecticides. These people, these Muslims who are coming here to kill people, they are breeding. They have their breeding places. Amen. Amen. And that's where our target should be. They want to come in through Mexico. They want to come in through this side. They and if all of them came here, where will you stay? Where will you live? You will have no land. So if you love this country, be part of this mission. Let us go to where these people breed and, and accomplish the great commission. And get there and teach them the word of God that will change them. Amen? Amen. If you love your country and you, in 20 years, if we live this like this, in 20 years, Muslims will be everywhere. And you know they believe in marrying seven wives. They believe in having as many kids as they want. It will be a great burden on you to feed their children. On your taxes. Because once they get here, they have kids. The law, you are, your law says they can live here. And they will have more kids and more kids and more kids and more kids. And they will be pushing you and pushing you. When you go to vote with them, they will always outvote you. It's just a matter of time. I'm not talking about hate speech. I'm talking about reality. Amen? Amen. So, it takes someone who has telescopic eyes. You have to see far. Not what you have, the food on the table. Look 20 years to come. 30 years to come. If these people are going to continue like this, you are, believe me, you don't need an army. You, ha, you are an army of the Lord. And if you can obey the great commission and the plan of God, get out there where these people are breeding. Let us share the gospel. Let us take those children that they take and train to kill. Let us train them to be good Christians for their own countries. They can change their countries for the better so that they don't have to come to America. We can take America to them. Because God who made America great will make their country great. That's what I believe. And I'm looking for people to work with. And this is, that's why God has opened the door for us to know each other. I thank you so much. Our enemy is the devil. It's not about our religion. Our enemy is the devil. The accuser of the brethren. The divide of people. The one who comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus comes to give life and to give it more abundantly. You see this microphone? It's not white. It's black. Do you know why the church bought it for? They didn't look at the color. They, as long as this microphone is functioning and is remitting the, the purpose of which it was bought for, it's still a good microphone. Nobody is here to look at your color. Pastor can tell you when he came to Africa, his color attracted many kids. They were just, how are you? How are you? How are you? How are you? Everywhere he went, how are you? How are you? How are you? <laughs> you see, the love of Christ. That's what we are here on earth for, to love one another. To encourage one another. To do something for Jesus before you go there. Amen. If you love your country, you wouldn't say, I will stay here. American government, I give them my taxes. They will send the army to Afghanistan. They will send the army to Somalia. They will send the army. Mm -mm. 
The army will go with their guns, but what are they looking for? Those people don't have uniform that you will aim at them and say, the one who has this uniform is my target. No. And you can't kill everybody. So, it is important that we identify the enemy, who the enemy is, and how to go about it. For us to save our community, to save our countries, to save our friends, like this uh, Samaritan, good Samaritan. He came with a plan. He saw the man who had been beaten. He did something about it, and he took him there, and he also gave his money to, to, to make sure that he's taken care of. It's going to cost us to love Jesus. It's going to cost us, but you can't compare what costed Jesus from heaven to come and die. What we are doing for God is just nothing compared to what Jesus did for us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor. dismiss and go I think uh, it's good to be reminded what he said don't miss your opportunity don't miss your chance God is always presenting to us an opportunity to serve to minister it may be to our next door neighbor it may be to the person sitting beside you this morning your neighbor who is your neighbor your neighbor is the person that's closest to you in need and you can be a neighbor to that person and so this morning you may have an opportunity and I pray that you would uh, uh, seize that opportunity. Don't, don't miss that opportunity. We have opportunities to get involved in ministry. But the greatest opportunity this morning may be for you to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You see, the, uh, the, the Bible says, Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens unto me, I will come in and dine with him and he with me. But now he will not kick the door down. And he will not knock forever. There is a season of opportunity to receive Christ as your Savior. And once that opportunity is gone, just like when the, uh, Noah built the ark, there was a certain time there for people to get in the ark. But once the door was shut, the season was gone. The opportunity was gone. There was no more opportunity. And so for you this morning, you may have come to this church not expecting to be saved. This may not uh, have been on your mind when you came. You, you may have just felt a strange urging this morning to go to church. Or maybe you've been thinking about, what should I do with my life? Or where am I going? What's going to be the end of it? That's God speaking to you, saying today is your day. Maybe today is your opportunity. Don't let your opportunity pass by. Would you stand with me this morning? Bow your heads and close your eyes. And with every head bowed and every eye closed, I want to ask you as our musicians come and we're going to sing a song, we're going to give an invitation. And this is the invitation that we invite you to come and receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. If you're tired of sin and you're, 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 you know you need to be saved, we ask you to come and and, and say a simple prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. And I believe that Jesus died on the cross, that he rose again, and that he is Lord. And I ask you to forgive me of my sin and come into my life. And the Bible says, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This morning, if you want to say that simple prayer and receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, in just a moment, we're going to be in the scene. I want to ask you to step out. And maybe this morning you have opportunities to serve and to stop being selfish and to live for others instead of just for yourself. God's speaking to your heart through Pastor Chris. There are many, many needs all over this world. And you want to say, yes, God, here I am. I want to be a servant. Would you pray with me now? Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you thanking you for this message from our dear brother Chris as he's preached and this message in song from Sister Joan. 
God, right now we would plead with you on behalf of those who may not know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Dear Father, I pray that you touch their heart right now and it make it crystal clear to them that their need is Jesus and that you would give them the courage to step forward and say, today I want to receive Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. And Lord, there are many others who are uh, maybe sitting on the sideline waiting for some something when there's a, a, a wounded man in the ditch right in front, in front of them. Don't let them pass it by, Lord. Don't let them pass them by. Lord, help us to have mercy and compassion and to reach out and to meet those needs. This is the invitation of God. We pray you use it for your glory. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you need to